We are adding human like sensing to devices with Intel Real Sense. Good morning. Um, we're setting up just uh, a few minutes. I wanted to start by saying how excited I am to be here to be able to share our uh, work at Intel uh, on the areas of Real Sense and autonomous machines and intelligent devices. We can start as soon as the slides come up. So, how are you? It's been a good morning. Um, so, I think we are, we are, as an industry, at the onset of a very exciting revolution, which uh, our, our late uh, visionary leader, Andy Grove, might have called an inflection point. Uh, and I want to uh, share with you a particular aspect of that, which is to add human-like sensing to computers. We, of course, at Intel and worldwide, among partners, have been doing a lot of work to enhance computing technology. And a lot of the focus has been on processing, the processor, uh, computing technologies. And just to put things in perspective, it's been about 40 years since the introduction of the first microprocessor. And we've gone from literally a couple of thousands of transistors on a chip to more than 10 billion of them. Uh, it's, an, it's an enormous scale as the technology has uh, improved, allowing us to do amazing stuff in terms of computing. Form factors, things have gone from room full of computing devices to devices in your pocket. Uh, but today I'm going to talk about the other aspect of it, being able to add sensing capabilities so the devices can, can see and devices can understand. And I want to first start by looking at the examples of applications that are here now, and, and then give you a glimpse of what's uh, ahead of us uh, in the future. These are a few examples I've picked of devices that are shipping now. I'm proud to say oh, they all have Intel RealSense technology. I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm going to tell you about what, this, what the technology is. But I'm, I, since I have a short time here, I, uh, I'm going to just quickly go through these applications and then come back to the applications later. Uh, and I've broken them into a few categories that in a limited time I can, I can tell you about. The first is this area of 3D sensing computing devices. And I picked three devices there. Uh, up on the top is Razer Stargazer uh, peripheral. It's a small little peripheral that can connect with your Windows PCs. To the device from 3D systems for a handheld 3D scanning device that also connects with your PC and allows you to create 3D model of uh, physical objects, and you can print out on a printer. And the device on the on the bottom is one of many millions that you've shipped over the last couple of years with depth sensing technology built inside the PCs. This one is from HP and allows you to scan humans into 3D models. You can post them on Facebook or inter interface with the devices with gestures, log in with technologies like Microsoft Windows Hello. Uh, which could not have been possible with just 2D cameras. I think it's going to flicker a little bit, so just very uh, technology. And still allows us to tell the story. The second category I'm going to talk about are uh, really this exciting area of autonomous machines. Uh, we have been dreaming about this for, for decades for those of us that have dedicated our, our work in uh, uh, developing machines that have the intelligence and uh, capabilities to navigate, understand the world. Uh, I've shown a few devices there, drones and robots. I'll talk about them, so uh, bear with me. And the third category I'm going to talk about is this emerging, yet very exciting uh, area of virtual, augmented, and large reality devices. And I'll tell you where, where I'm going to give you some examples of it. Last but not the least, time permits, I'll show you the glimpse of how your mirrors are going to be. And again, devices that are already in the market and some of them are like that. Come. Mirrors do not have to be just a pure dumb device that reflects light, but we can put smarts into that. I'll show you an example of that. Okay, with that, uh, let me just step back and share just one slide that's uh, inspired us, uh, this work. And when you think of Intel, you probably think of microprocessors, uh, but we've been working on this for almost half a decade. 
and uh, it's a pretty significant uh, new product development and uh, business unit now. Uh, but this is the slide that we put together at the beginning of, of this project that have really inspired us. What makes us the humans? Um, we have some amazing set of sensors. Uh, it, these are perceptual sensors. Eyes that allow us to not just collect photons from the environment, but reconstruct the world in 3D. Uh, to me, you are just what the light is conveying information, getting emitted from there, getting reflected from your faces, chairs and floors. My visual system is capturing that light, so that's the sensor part. But then I'm doing a whole bunch of, whole bunch of stuff with that information. I'm actually understanding, running some software in my visual cortex to recognize and understand the environment. I see you as humans, uh, not just a collection of 3D objects. Uh, and then I'm using the data to interact, walking around, not falling down from here. Uh, I'm saying hello, Raghu. That's uh, part of interaction as well. So as engineers, we'd like to then decipher that into steps that we understand and we can attempt to build. Uh, sensors, so we focused a lot on really understanding the electro-optics and the mechanics of the 3D visual sensing subsystem of humans. Those are the, your 3D uh, the visual system consisting of the two eyes and the visual cortex at the brain. So it's really a collection of electro-optics and processing technologies that are optimized for the function. And then in the speed of uh, going fast, I'm not going to dive into this, but also vestibular motion sensing that you have close to your inner ear. Those are three mutually perpendicular rings that are filled with fluids. And as you move in one direction, it sends, senses you six degrees of freedom motion information. We are really using the data from all of these perceptual sensors as we navigate, understand the world. And if we understand them well, then we could potentially build devices that do the same. Learning, lots of exci excitement around machine learning and artificial intelligence. Uh, with the developments in sensors and computing technologies, combined with neural network based uh, deep understanding technologies is what's now making this possible. So just bear with me as I take you through a very rapid journey of how all of this is coming together in uh, bringing about this revolution. Translating those into technologies. We have built the real sense technology to be able to tersely define, do a few things. One, capture the world in 3D. You all are familiar with this color picture that I show in the middle, which is the picture of a human hand. It's captured with the real sense imaging device. But what's unique to the real sense camera versus your camera on the phone or a, a webcam on your PC is that it also captures a uh, depth image corresponding to the color image. So the depth image is for those of you who are not in 3D computer vision, it, although it looks sort of like a scale picture, every pixel on the picture, it's an 8-bit picture, so values range from 0 to 255. That's an indication of where in space that point is. So now you not only know the color of every point that you're looking at, you also know where in the 3D space that point is. That's the fundamental building block of our visual system. When I'm looking at you at the room, Obviously, everything is colorful, so I've got, I've got color sensors, the cones in the eyes. But the stereoscopic vision plus the, the processor in my visual cortex that does very low power, efficient calculation of binocular disparity, and hence calculates the 3D coordinates of every point I see, allows me to understand the world in 3D. So I know exactly where what point is that allows me to deconstruct. Uh, also, motion sensor. We, uh, I'm going fast, that's a very critical part of uh, the sensing system, subsystems of humans. So the goal for us, again, the engineering view of real sense, this is actually captured with real sense, is that we need to be able to see with this device a solid reconstruction of the 3D world. That means I want to know the 3D structure real time, just like humans do. And obviously I skip the color there. We also have the color picture, so we can texture map the color of every point. So we see the world in 3D, in color, like humans do. Uh, so I just wanted to show you uh, uh, an image out of capture with real real sense camera. So what are these real sense devices? We have built these sensors that I show on the left. Three generations have shipped in the market. 
We've shipped a few millions of them. But just to give you a sense of how big they are, how small they are, um, the, far, the first one that you see up on the top is the RealSense SR300 camera. We started with F200, replaced that with a better device, SR300. Uh, don't have a lot of time, it's a beautiful technology. But in short, uh, it includes, it's based on coded light technology. So we actually project invisible binary codes, special temporal codes of infrared light. It has a, the world's tiniest MEMS projector uh, that has 307,000 meters on them. And we can click one of them, each one of them, thousands of times per second. And then we have an IR camera that you can take pictures of that, of the special temporal code at 600 frames per second. Result, with a processor that's built right inside the sensor, we can capture 18 million 3D points per second. So uh, if you just compare that with other 3D sensors, visual sensors that are in the market, this is generations ahead in terms of what it can do in terms of fog factor, 100 times smaller than the first Kinect product that you might be having in your living room. Uh, single USB device that you can connect, provide power and move data around. This has been built into PCs and those scanner devices that I uh, showed you. In the middle is the RealSense. LR200 camera, it's based on two IR sensors with a laser projector uh, coupled with a diffuser. Works like a human visual system with two images captured. And we have a very low power stereo correlation chip that's right inside here that does low power 3D point calculations. It's going really fast because I have short time. The one in the bottom, uh, by the way, the one in the middle we put on drones. I'm going to show you examples of this. The one in the bottom includes a 3D motion sensors as well, and uh, a fisheye camera for very wide field of view motion tracking. Uh, this is what is ideal for robotics. So when you get these hardware devices, but for the system makers, they'll buy these modules and put inside. But for developers out there to experiment, you also package them in small little peripheral devices with a single USB core. So you connect with your PC or any uh, embedded computer board, and you can develop applications. So for you also have a bunch of software libraries that we built to take full advantage of the 3D data that some of them are shown on the right, uh, on, on, your, on your right, on my left. And some libraries, for example, are full 3D hand skeleton tracking, real time. So you know exactly what I'm doing with my fingers if you are developing uh, a gesture interactive application. Uh, to facial feature and emotion recognition library, to full body tracking for robots, uh, to video conferencing with background segmentation. You could be at a bar, but if you have a 3D sensor, you could be having your office picture as a background, uh, green screen effect. To full 3D reconstruction, the picture in the middle is 3D, 3D reconstructed version of our CEO. Uh, to uh, jump to the bottom right, a full 3D understanding. And bear with me on that. I'm going to show you a live uh, demo or video of uh, demo to explain to you what uh, that does. So let me just uh, quickly go through a few applications that we have. Uh, we have been partnering with the industry to uh, that take full advantage of this 3D sensing technologies. Virtual reality. Any of you have a virtual reality device you've tried on? Very few. For the rest, you have to. It's quite amazing how how this is shaping up. You talk about screens and you know, going from the small screen to bigger screen to curved screens. Why bother when you can have, you can be inside the content on it with a real headset on. It's quite, quite amazing for the gamers, for people who like to watch videos. What is this screenshot? Anybody watched the movie Matrix? Who has not watched the movie Matrix? <laughs> <laughs> Most of you have. So, uh, so I called uh, Morpheus. And uh, he asks, so what is real? He goes on, how do you define real? We like that, we are engineers. So here is his definition. If you're talking about what you can feel, smell, taste, and see, then real is simply electrical signals interpreted by your brain. So that's kind of profound for us. Because if that's what is real, to me what's now real <coughs> is the light reflected from you, from your faces being interpreted by me with the electrical signals in my visual cortex, then uh, I should be able to engineer this experience. I should, you should be able to create 
sensations and signals in my cortex that fool me into believing something to be real when it is not. That's really the premise of virtual reality. So uh, to prove, you, prove to you that it's possible, I brought my friend. For those of you that have listened to my presentations before, you might have seen it. How many of you have seen The Frog? Not very much. So, thank you. so I hope the sound is on. Please enjoy our friend. Can you have the sound on? Because I'm going to show you that it's a real frog. So why is this relevant to VR? Well, we were putting the frog there uh, into believing that he's surrounded by insects. Uh, I don't have a lot of time, but I have a lot of proof that it's not just frogs. We can fool ourselves. I left out those slides, but we could really fool your visual and auditory sensory system into thinking something exists when it doesn't. And that's what we VR engineers are tapping into. Uh, but in the short time I have, I want to show you something very specific in the VR. VR is already exciting. It's, it's going to change a lot of things. It's going to change your gaming experience, media consumption experience. It's going to change virtual tourism of being able to put a headset on and, and go about watching your own things that you, uh, you could not have done before. But we recently unveiled Project Alloy in that sense. We are building as Intel a complete new Mars reality experience. And we're focused on just enhancing the experience of VR. Number one, we want it to be fully untethered and unconnected. That means we want competing systems inside. We put a PC plus processor, graphics, and sensor accelerators on the device itself. I'm showing you a blown up view of Project Alloy. Number two, we put real sense technology for inside out tracking. For those of you that have played with VR, you need to equip your room with uh, tracking systems. We don't like that. We want to be able to just stand up and go on a walk. And the device needs to be able to track by its sensors inside, which real sense can allow. Next, I need, we need to be able to just lift our hand and see our hand and manipulate things with our hand. When you have a VR headset on and you are reliant on using these very heavy controllers for every sort of manipulation and control, it breaks the realism. So that's been the focus for Project Alloy. We have just shown up the device. We have announced that next year we'll bring it to market. Um, so I'm going to show you just maybe one video of many demos that are quite awesome about how you can push the, the virtual real, reality experience and bring it, make it much reality. Uh, those of us that are playing with VR, we like to manipulate things with our hands. So I picked that example. Uh, it's quite powerful. So here, we have the virtual world, a metal leg, and that's the real hand. I'm just manipulating a virtual object with my real hand or anything real for you, any object for that matter. So this combines the virtual world with the real world. And that's just one example. There are many other examples. The one on the lower right I'm going to show you, but that's a physical 3D scan of a gigantic castle in Germany. And I can put my project alloy headset on and I can walk around it and experience that castle as if I'm visiting that area. It's going to be a transformative experience. But let me move forward because there are quite a few areas I have to hit. Autonomous robots and drones. Um, anyone here flies drones? You guys work too hard. <laughs> uh, well, I'm, uh, millions of you do, because drone market is over a few billion dollars already. And um, the consistent feedback from consumer drone companies are drone users, are they not safe to fly? Because when you're flying them, you're constantly struggling to make sure with your controller, uh, uh, trying to make sure it doesn't fly into the tree or doesn't fly into the building. And uh, it's very hard when the drone is so far. How far is it from the tree or from the building? So you can fly it in open space, then it limits the applications. Two areas like inspections. Uh, you would like, to, like the drone to automatically go and inspect, create 3D models of bridges, so you can inspect them later on to see where there are cracks. And your roof, why do you want people to go and walk and break the tiles on your roof? You should be able to sit safely in front of your screen and see what the drone sees that's flying around without running into the roof, of course. So we have added 
real-time 3D visual sensing with real sense to drones. And I want to show you one example from our partners in Beijing, Unique, they're one of the largest consumer drone companies. They are now shipping uh, Typhoon H, just selling like hotcake. They are already a very popular drone, except the Typhoon H model includes real sense for autonomous 3D reconstruction, scene understanding, and collision avoidance technology. I'm going to show you a video of, uh, of the drone. So essentially when you put low power uh, 3D scene capture and with deep learning technologies, being able to understand what the drone sees, you literally transform drones from what they are today to the drones that you want them to be. It's quite exciting for us. Uh, and quite a few other examples. Anybody have stayed in the Cupertino's uh, a -Loft Hotel or a number of other hotels that are now deploying Savior robot? Uh, to help deliver stuff to your room. Uh, and last time I was presenting, there was a, a, a lady in the audience saying, yeah, I stayed at a loft hotel, and yes, I did order, uh, ask the front desk to deliver a hair dryer, and the robot showed up to deliver it. Uh, with real sense, it has the complete 3D map of the hotel, entire hotel, and it can autonomously navigate and, and go around uh, delivering things to you. Okay, this, these are signs of autonomous machines to come and help you in your day-to-day -day lives. <laughs> Asus uh, robot, that's a consumer robot. They show it off, show off at Computex. Um, and I probably will show you the video of it. That's uh, Asus chairman, Johnny Shi. Uh, he's in town this week, uh, meeting with him tomorrow. But uh, let me show you uh, a demo of his, of his device. Computex earlier this week, Asus announced its first ever robot, Zebo. And we managed to take some time out of the show to check out up close at Asus headquarters where Chairman Johnny Shi gave us a quick demo. Hi, my name is Simbo. It is a pleasure to meet you. Obviously, Simbo can do a lot more than just introduce himself. By using simple voice commands, he's able to control home appliances, cast media to the TV, take photos, play music while dancing to it, Ember is essentially an Android tablet on wheels. It also features several sensors for object avoidance, plus drop avoidance, a depth camera for object recognition, and a port for future add-ons. Our ambition is to enable the one for every household and only one man in my life. So we get an idea. There's a lot of experience on uh, big, big, bringing, finally bringing a companion to your home that can autonomously navigate, communicate with you, and make your life easy. Uh, the future smart homes, you're starting to see the, uh, the beginning of that. Mirrors, why should we leave that category out? You're spending time in front of it, uh, doing a lot of, lot of things here, and you put on the suit, you see how you look. So what is unique with this picture here? You see that uh, it's not just a bare reflection, you can actually change your clothes. And uh, we have several of these in deploy deployment already, uh, on the left, I show Memomi's memory mirror, uh, and literally a live uh, shot of a demo here. This gentleman wearing a red sweater, but then quickly flipping through a digital menu of other clothes and getting a sense of how he is going to look in that clothes. Wouldn't you love that to be able to quickly flip through hundreds of pieces of clothes and then finally deciding which one you really want to try? Uh, the feedback is uh, uh, from the shoppers is amazing. Uh, that's going to transform your experience in shopping. I'm going to show you this, a demo from here, of partners in San Francisco, a company called Naked Labs, and they're focusing on a mirror that can scan your body to a 3D shape with precise measurements and with health focus. It allows you to track on a day-to-day -day basis how you're progressing. 
Okay? And they were interviewed on TV, so let me just uh, show you that video. Any of the bodies? What you have here is this is much more than just here. This has Intel real sense cameras inside of it. You stand on top, it's fine. You might be able to stand on top. Yeah, that's the way that it Get on top, it's a turn to you, you can do it. It's a turntable, which will take a 3D image of your whole body. And everything, everything from weight and body mass, all of it, and you keep doing it and you see the changes. Alright. And then you're going to have turning. And you're getting and you're Okay, so just again, you know, you, you'll see things come to come to consumer homes that do not exist today uh, when you allow devices to see and understand. Uh, so with that, there's a quite a few developers here. I understand people who are leading the wave of building new type of systems. So I did want to bring the glimpse of what to come. So I'm going to show you for the next few minutes uh, things that are not available yet, but very soon, in a few weeks to a month, will be. I want to show you the RealSense camera that we just announced, the next generation. And there's a lot of feedback on 3D sensors. I really want long range. Uh, well, you are seeing here our next generation, which I'm tipping off the depth map at 60 meters. And we're going to take it on a drive to show you how it can deal with outdoor bright sunlight and high contrast areas of black to get a good feed factor in depth map. You, so you see color picture on the left and the corresponding depth picture on the right. And let me just uh, play this video. So we're taking it on a ride, and it's creating a real-time 3D map of everything that it sees around. You can imagine what other applications are going to bring the essence into. Okay, so with that, what can you get from us? Well, Intel.com slash RealSense. The kits or, uh, that you can get for development purposes, the cameras themselves, uh, packaged inside easy to use peripheral devices. Of course, if you want high volume modules for integration, uh, we will sell that to you as well. But these are just developer kits. This one includes the fisheye camera and motion sensor. This one includes a computer board for uh, running your robotics applications. That's our next generation atom processor inside uh, an easy to use kit called Intel Jewel. And we have also announced a drone development kit. I'll have something more to say about that. And I'll have more to say about this as well. This little device, which I'm holding up here, our CEO called it a developer dream because it includes a real sense camera, a wide field of view, fisheye camera, a motion sensor, all the stuff that I showed you plus an atom processor, plus Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, all inside this little device. So you take, take any dumb robot and you program this in and put it on it, and it becomes an autonomous uh, machine. And I'm going to show you an example of what it can do. First, the, of the two that I'm going to show you, one is the drone kit. Uh, as excited, excited as we are about the $2,000, $1,500 consumer drones that you buy, or the $1,000 commercial drones that are going about inspection work. We also decided to make and sell a low-cost, ready-to-fly developer drone. So if you might to fear a drone maker, you might want to just buy the drone board that has the processing electronics and the vision kit, which is the real sense cameras. Or if you're an application developer and would rather not waste time building a drone, you could buy this complete set from us a ready-to-fly drone, uh, drone kit for your experience. It's available in December, so you could actually open for pre-order already on intel.com slash RealSense. Okay, but this is what I'm going to show you and finish my talk. Uh, in the beginning, I started with a, with a grand slide claiming to slowly work towards human-like sensing and understanding. How far are you from that? So here I show you a demo we captured uh, in a building with a device like this. Again, remember this has depth sensing, color sensing, motion sensing, uh, onboard processing, and wireless connectivity all inside this device. We're going to take it around in this room, and we're going to do a few things. We're going to look at 
where things are, we're going to create a 3D map of the environment. And I'm going to show you the top view of that, which is in the computer vision jargon. It's called the 2D occupancy map. Pretty much like a, a layout of your room. And then once it, we're also going to learn deep learning on it to recognize things. I need to be able to say, that's a chair, that's a pillow, that's a bathroom, that's a picture frame, that's a door. And I need to be able to automatically label uh, the room. Let me show you where are we with that technology. So we are walking through, as you can see on here, the, on the right is the 2D occupancy map, the top down view of the layout. They're automatically being created from the data that's been captured with the cameras. I'm going to speed it up. But here you see the, the coordinates, 3D coordinates of exactly where those recognized points are. It's creating a layout and it's marking things like pillows, bed, table. I'm spinning it up now. As the robot or a drone or you with your phone with this real sense technology inside and walked around your floor, you have automatically created a full 3D map reconstructed model with full understanding of where is what. Guess what? When you go to a new environment, whether you just checked into your hotel room last night, this is exactly what you do. You open the door, you come in, and you actually create a 3D reconstructed <coughs> model. You go check out, ah, I realize that's a window. <coughs> There's my bed. That's the TV set. And that's a lamp. Here is a switch. You are creating 3D, 3D model of the environment. You don't know it. Kind of take it for granted. But when you want to build something like that, you realize how complex it is. Now you're talking about building sensor systems, deep learning technology to be able to recognize what you see, building a map. Why do you do that? Because that's the foundation for autonomous machines, robots, drones, 3D scanning devices. Uh, that could be now built because of what you're de 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 delivering is human-like perceptual system, the brain and the sensor module of the autonomous machine and interactive systems. So with that, I'd like to uh, give you an open invite to collaborate with us. We, uh, as Intel, are an open company. We thrive by partnering with the ecosystem. We build the technology, we partner with companies that build applications and systems. We really work together broadly. All the things I've shown here are available to you, either as development kits or experimenting with them, or if you want to go into high volume business as low cost products, uh, these are the links. Uh, let's contact us. Let's work together to bring the future faster. Thank you.